Alrighty guys, it is Monday the 1st of August. We're tackling Eventful Descent for the monthly track competition. It's the first of the month, which means that this is not your normal track. But it's for the monthly track competition. I don't know what the monthly track competition was. I feel like this is this has to be some sort of lol track, but I'm not sure. I mean, are we playing Pachinko? That's what's happening? I just throw myself in here and wait and just watch? I guess that is what happens. I should hold the W because I believe if you break... Okay, so I have some control over what's happening. Because I'm not no engine. So, holding holding accelerate will make my car. Okay, holding accelerate will make my car fall faster. Then also, I have steering. I have steering, which means that um, I can control the rotation a little bit. Okay, I gotta figure out what the easy, the fastest way to get into this is. Like this. It's gonna be a case of how fast can I go straight down this. Hanging on the poles like that is not gonna be a good idea. What are those textures? Like, what is this? Like, what? We've got, like, ships? And a building? Like, hello? Okay, so there's... There can't be, like, a straight down path. Uh, there is a straight down path in line with this, but I'd have to be going perfectly straight down. Which I don't know if it is at all possible. Who do we have? We have a 34. Took a screenshot. Okay, here we go. Falling down the thing. Don't want to get hung up on these too much. You also don't want to be driving on them. I have I I do have input, but I have very little input. The most input I have is this initial section. That's the line right there. If I can get in between those two and just fall perfectly straight down, technically then I would have the fastest time. I wanna like rotate, I wanna stop rotation on my car such that I'm like pointing straight down or as straight down as I can be. So that I just fall right through like that. There's two seconds of improvement. Of course, there's no back way. Put a million walls on it to make sure that doesn't happen. Unless there's like a specific, let me, let me, there's a 21 second time. How is it? How very straight down does it go? Actually not very, just like some good bounces. That's okay. Okay, I see now. 21 seconds. I tried to, I entered slowly 
just so I could possibly get a nose down, which is what I actually did. Seems like it did help to some degree. How do you manage that? And it's gonna be a slower time? No, it's still two seconds of improvement. I was about to be like really mad that that was gonna be a slower time because I landed on my roof and just sat there for ages. Okay. Let me actually. Okay, I was going straight down. Okay. Don't want to be in the middle. To keep this straight down. This faster? Okay, it was. Did not expect that. It didn't seem like it was going to be faster, but it was. It's not faster, only because of a very small change. Okay. I wonder if I, like, get a slower setup. And just, like, kind of be careful about it. I might be able to just... Line myself up to go as straight down as possible. That's not going to be good, because I just hit the center pole. Honestly, I think if you hit the center pole, you're already off to a bad start. You'd like to avoid doing that if you can. I say you'd like to avoid doing that if you can. I'm having a great time running straight into that pole. There it is. I don't want to be flat. I'm going to hit it. At least make it so that I hit it with an immediate bounce off. Okay, good. Oh, that was smooth. Just drive on the pole. Simple. Oh, this is barely an it's it's not even an improvement, but it was it was close. What if I just like drive on the on like the pole? It's really easy to hit that center thing. And I don't think I was doing it before. Not hitting the center like the less poles you hit the better, so hitting the very first pole you could hit is not a great time. Like every pull I hit is a time loss. Oh, that was good. I don't know if it matters though. It was good. Now it's not, but. Big hit on the pull there. Sometimes the camera zo oh you know what it is I say sometimes the camera zooms in I was or that's what I was about to say is sometimes the camera zooms in and I have no way of 
and it, and it seems like it zooms in further than other times. And the reason that is is because sometimes I'm in the big, in the, I'm in right against the back wall of the plink pachinko machine, and the other times I'm close to the uh, inside wall or the the wall closest to the camera. Let's get a sideways so I can just drive down. Oh, okay. I mean, it was good, and now it's not. Might still be an improvement? It was. You know, we're getting more and more improvement as, as it goes on. So all things considered, it's not great. I like the drive down the wall strategy, personally. I'm not sure how useful it is. That's not it. 27-8. A cool flip. Honestly, these diagonals are kind of useful. Like, look how much, look how much movement I'm getting just from doing that. And then I spend seven years upside down on one pull. Ruins my entire run. Yeah, get a nice diagonal like that. You just make sure you don't spend seven years on the same pole and you might actually be good. Okay, that doesn't, that's not. You have some level of control whenever you drive on the sidewall like that. Whether or not that's the strategy, hmm, hard to tell, but... Whoa. You know, if it takes a really long time to go down the hole, but it's like the line that goes, that doesn't hit a single pole, I'm not too worried about it, actually. I have to consider that, like, taking some time to set up to fall down the pit might be worth it if I don't touch a single pole on the way down. Because there, like I said, there, there is that line. Now, I don't know if that line is thick enough for a car, but there is a line in which I would go straight down. Or there's at least one spot. There's at least one spot in the Pachinko machine that if you were able to go straight down through it, you would be able to... Oh, I'm just going to drive on the, uh, the pole here. Get a real nice little pole section here. And uh, what you do is you um, you line it up real nice. Make sure you make sure you carefully turn. And go... Oh, I was going to try and go down as straight as possible, but uh, I got a little too overzealous. just bouncing between like two poles and you did not be doing that like the start was super strong I didn't touch a single pole for a while and then suddenly I was bouncing back and forth between every pole
It's a nice diagonal. Oh, and then that's a really slow landing. But I think overall this is an improvement. Yes, it is. There's the author medal. Not a very prestigious author medal to have, but you know, it's an author medal. I doubt there was much grinding put into this map. What the heck? How did that bounce work? Guess I should spend a little bit more time checking. Like for... For lines that go straight down and how thick they are. I think they're all the same thickness because the mapper noticed all the different spots that you could go straight down in and made sure to put a pole in between them. So I think that the I think that the gap is this gap between these two poles. If this gap is big enough for a car, like I said, you could probably go straight down into the finish. But if there's any possible way of setting that up is another question. Basically any of the gaps with a smaller pole diameter section. The sections directly vertical from that are the sections that you could potentially fall the whole way down through if your car was perfectly vertical and going straight down. That's a very tough ask. But you know, it's possible that it could happen. Okay, bouncing back and forth between these two poles, bad. I want to be skipping rows of poles. The more rows of pulls I skip, the less time I f have to fall, like, I fall for less time. Like that. Oh, that was a big section of pulls that I skipped. I want to get enough, like, sideways momentum that I can just start going diagonally through the poles. Because the gap is... larger. Although, it's a lot harder to... Um, keep the momentum... to go diagonally like that. What if you could, like... How far out do these finishes it? Oh, you... Mm. Even if I got, like, some rim out and just jumped over, I'd still be entering the the pit just from the front, I guess. Interesting that these are... Oh, no, they're not. We've just got a block. A road block, it looks like, that has no texture on one side. There's most certainly a texture on the bottom. Going in backwards. Real test of if it... of what can be done, will be done. Oh, big diagonal. Don't know how well it's going to work out, though. I mean, that was a good run, but still... Yeah, so I guess it doesn't matter even if I was able to somehow get out of this starting section because it would just throw me into the pachinko machine maybe a little bit earlier. I do want to see if there's... I don't think it would be because if, you, if I'm using the rim of the circle to bounce out, why not just use the hole in the circle? I'm going to the same place. 
The only difference is, would be is if it provided a better setup for a like a more direct way down. Very good at bouncing to the right. That time I just landed on the pole. Pretty sure with this kind of track, if I if I am at a, at a at any point on a pole long enough to be able to control like the steering of my car, and it's probably I'm probably on it for too long. What was that? I had a good diagonal. Oh, this is a good diagonal. No, it's not. I landed on it. I landed on it. Okay, that was a great job of landing on it. You don't want to do backflips. It's definitely not what you want to do. Okay, so I'm going to hit the center pole, but I'm going to do some side flips. Some dope side flips. And then I'm going to land on the, like, the third rung down. Okay, that didn't do anything. really good at driving on that section. It does kind of me make a consistent uh, section, but it's not like it helps me. I wouldn't understand if they were, I, I think it'd be weird if they weren't symmetrical, but there's a possibility that maybe the right side is different or the left side is different than the right side. I don't see why it would be, but you know, there's always the possibility that for some reason it's left-sided bias. And what you actually want is to be bouncing on the left side of the pachinko board. You definitely want to be going in the diagonals, but you don't want to be on a diagonal that ends you up in these smaller poles. How did I land for so long on the smaller pole, dude? Okay, sure. Somehow I'm bouncing to the right. I found a <laughs> top 10 ways you can bounce to the right of this pachinko board every single time. Professional pachinko players hate him. He's on record saying, I don't know what the heck I was doing to make that happen. What do you expect me to know? Later, we will give you footage of what happens when he tries to play Pachinko. It's what he's doing, cheating. Probably not. Find out more at 7. Checks. Clock. Oh god, it's 6.53. Here. Oh god, it's 6.53. <laughs> It's seven almost. What am I doing? What do I do? Oh, this is good. I'm not paying it this way. You know what I have to do? I have to not pay attention to the run. And then suddenly I am able to randomly fall through the things faster than I would normally. Because I wasn't influencing the rotation of my car that whole time and making a dumb joke about next time at three. Whoa, there was the straight down line almost. I was like, oh, look at the time. It's almost six, it's almost seven. And then that's when my that's when the god level of me comes out and I just am able to suddenly fall like straight through this pachinko machine. Got it. Make more stupid jokes. The more stupid jokes, the better, because apparently that's when I gain the ability to, uh... 
play pachinko. Oh, we've got five more minutes of dropping my car down this pachinko board and possibly getting a faster time. Let's see what happens. The answer, I may or may not get a faster time depending on how the gods will my falling. I wonder, you gotta get in the map maker's head here. You gotta see, so the map maker probably, evenly spaced the poles. It looks like there's possibly some level of gridness to the poles. They're at least on the same level horizontally, and then they're, each of the two rows of big poles are maybe spaced evenly apart. So it's probably like a diamond shape of the big poles. And then, I wonder if the, the mapper then, in any particular order, hold on, I now have to look. I wonder if the mapper, in any particular order, placed the smaller sections. Or if those are kind of randomly placed. They look randomly placed. They don't look like they have any sort of bit to them. No. It definitely doesn't look like the, the smaller poles are in any particular spots. You don't want patterns in maps that are meant to feel random like this. Because then you, get, you have that one person who's like, I, I found the pattern. I found the way to go through it all without touching a single pole. And though those technically exist in this track... One, the setup to do that would be pretty difficult, and two, it would depend on where you do it because uh, the the central poles to stop a straight downfall are are consistently in the center between the two poles, but are randomly placed throughout the whole board. You wouldn't be able to fall for any consistent amount of time without hitting one, unless you got the god spot. Uh, don't just crash into it like that. He says as he does it again. I want to know what the MTC theme was, or the like, the restrictions were that allowed a track that that puts this in the same category as the MTC. I mean, it's not like the MTC is restricted to normal tracks. You can make an MTC out of any track style. I just want to know how a normal MTC track fits in to the same restrictions and or theme as this track. He says as he punches his microphone boom arm several times in a row. Well, it's looking like it's going to be it for today. Um, I will see you all tomorrow. We'll move back to whatever track happens to be the track of the day for Monday, or for Tuesday, the 2nd of August. Um, until then, I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. And I'll see you all after we hit the bottom of this pachinko machine. This will be the one time where I land on it and never actually hit the bottom of the pachinko machine, huh? Nah, I'm hitting the bottom. Later!